video, my name is Lisa Curcio. This is a YouTube live event and today is January 4th. We are starting a brand new year. It is 2021. Whether you are here watching the live with me or you've come by to watch the replay, I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for taking the time to be with me. I've got a fun fold card for you tonight called a slide and lock card. Looking at it from the front, you might think it doesn't look any different but it is quite surprising and really quite fun. And the best part, easy to put together. I'm gonna to give you lots of tips today about assembling your card. And there leaves a lot of creative freedom for this card as well for this fold, because you can actually size that panel on the front of the card to customize what you're actually gonna place on it. I'm gonna go over some coloring details and some other things with you as well. I'm also gonna be talking to you about this tonight during tonight's video. So I hope you'll hang with me till the very end. The Creative 8 team is coming back with a fabulous winter online stamp retreat you are not going to want to miss. I know many of you have already registered with us and I would love to have you join me. If you're interested right now and don't wanna to wait to the end, head over to lssretreat.com and you'll get all the information there. LSS stands for Lisa's Stamp Studio. Now, a couple things before we go live. You're gonna be able to find a link down in the video description below. That is below the title of this video. If you expand the text, that link will navigate you over to my website where you're gonna find the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies for tonight's card. In addition to that, I wanna introduce you to Megan. Megan is my assistant, and yes, she is a real person. We get asked this quite a bit. Megan's name is typically in blue, but I noticed tonight on my iPad as I'm viewing, as you view, that it's not. That could just be a YouTube thing, but she is here to help interact with you and answer your questions. And oftentimes she will tag you in that response. So we welcome Megan and we thank her for being here because quite frankly, it's impossible for me to keep up with your comments and your questions while I'm stamping and that's what you came here for. And then finally, we would love to have you interact with us and to do so, whether to chat during the live or to leave a comment, you're gonna need to log into your YouTube account which requires a Gmail address. So go ahead and do that so we can chat with you. All right, I think we're ready. I'm gonna turn the camera down, we'll get you all zoomed in and we'll get ready to get started. Here we go. Happy New Year to all of you. I pray that you had a wonderful Christmas, even though 2020 was very different than in years past. I know it was wonderful for us, but it was different. And you know what? It's still Christmas, right? We are gonna start by doing some scoring. Now I'm gonna give you some of the dimensions, but the rest of those are all gonna be in that link down in the video description below. Remember that's gonna navigate you over to what you need. This is four and a quarter by 11. There is no scoring on this because we're gonna do that score line together. And yes, there's just one. Doesn't that just make you happy? I've got my paper trimmer here. That light blade is for scoring and the dark blade is for cutting. I love this clear cutting guide and you can navigate them up and down out of the way so you can keep them on the track at the exact same time. The very first score line is gonna be on one end at two and three quarters of an inch. So I'm just gonna line that up here. You're gonna see there's a nice straight edge here at the top because I can't do anything straight. That's gonna allow me to make sure my cardstock is nice and even. And then once I have it here at two and three quarters, I'm going to go ahead and score. Now that's all there is for this. Now I'm gonna set that aside because while I've got the trimmer in your camera view, I wanna go over the next step. I have four pieces of cardstock here. These are all the exact same size. These happen to be three and a half by three and a half because of the image that I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna take two of them and I'm going to score them. The other two we're going to leave and put those two to the side. You're gonna score two of these in half at the half inch mark. And since these are three and a half inches, the half is at one and three quarters. So I've got one here, and then we're gonna do the exact same thing now with this one, one and three quarters. Again, I'm using that ledge to my advantage, and I'm just making sure it's lined up and we're gonna score. That is it. Now keep in mind, if you're gonna resize these squares, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're in a dimension where you can easily score them in half. Boy, did I learn the hard way? <laughs> because you, funky dimensions mean funky scoring in half, right? So let's take these and we're gonna crease on those score lines right now. And then I'm just gonna use my bone folder to go over those creases. Whenever you have creases, especially in a fun fold, using the bone folder to get them nice and crisp is really, really important. I'm gonna call these the hinges, okay? And this is what's gonna make that slide mechanism for our lock. I'm gonna set these aside for just a minute 
And I'm going to come back here to this card base. Do you remember how we just did that two and three quarter inch score line? Let's go ahead and fold that and let's use that bone folder again. And I'm going to go over that crease. This is going to actually create a gate fold for the slide mechanism. And the easiest way to do this is to actually just bring the other end in and meet it in the center. I'm just kind of butting them up together and then I'm just going to crease. I find by doing it this way, I'm guaranteed to meet them in the center. Now for a typical gate fold, this is good enough, but we're gonna go a little bit further tonight. And because there's going to be a slide mechanism here, I am gonna shave a sliver off of one of these two panels because I wanna make sure that it slides up and down really, really well. So I'm just gonna come back to my trimmer for just a minute. I'm gonna open up one end. It doesn't matter which one that you use. And I'm gonna line it up in here. The cutting track is this black line that's right here in that gray strip. So I'm gonna kind of use that as a gauge. You see the very end here on that gate, that gray part? I'm just gonna line that up. I'm gonna take my cutting blade, remember that dark one? And I'm starting at the bottom and I'm slicing and I'm literally taking off just a tiny, tiny hair as you can see. All right, so now what we've got is a slight gap between those two panels and that is what we need. I found that if you don't create that, this is just too tight to allow it to move. We certainly want them to be able to enjoy this fun fold when they get it, but they have to be able to open it, right? Now, if you ever have a trimmer where your blade is just not as sharp as it used to be, mine's in great shape because that trimmer is the bomb. I absolutely love it. I wanna give you a little tip. If you've ever trimmed, you might notice that one end might be a little bit more sharp or a little bit more stand up-ish. I don't know another word for that. Take your bone folder flat and run it across that edge. That's gonna help press that cardstock back down so it looks like they're both the same. I know, just a little cheat for you there, but it works really, really well. My next step is going to be to add some designer series paper to this. I chose to keep the designer series paper for this sample really simple because I wanted to be able to really showcase the slide and lock of this card. But I've got another sample to share with you, so make sure you hang with me. To do that adhesive portion, I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this thing. If you've watched my videos before, you know it's a beloved accessory. The reason I love it is because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means it's going to keep my work surface itself nice and sticky free because I tend to get a little zealous with my adhesive sometimes. This is going to go here on the panel. I like to open it up and make it flat, which makes it really easy for my hand. And then we're gonna attach this one here. Now we're gonna go over to the other piece. And if you're wondering, this designer paper actually comes from a six by six assortment that I love. Isn't this color really, really pretty? And I'm gonna add this one now on the other side. Again, down in the video description below, that link is gonna lead you over to all the supplies so there's no guesswork involved. And then we'll attach that here. Okay, so now we've got our two panels. So far, so good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna talk about taking these hinges that we created. And we're gonna take those other two pieces that I told you were part of the four initially. So this is gonna be a top and a bottom. These are gonna be the hinges. This is very, very simple. The only thing you need to know is that the crease is going to go to the center of one of these panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus to add adhesive. If you prefer to use the liquid glue, that's fine. It's gonna give you a little bit of wiggle room. Tonight, because of the live, I prefer to use my adhesive because it sets faster and you don't have to watch glue dry. But we are gonna go ahead and add some adhesive to this. And I'm gonna flip this over. I've got my Stampin' Seal Plus here. And I'm gonna be very generous with this because remember, this is gonna be a moving mechanism on this card. So I'm going all the way around the outside edges and you can see how important that Stampin' Seal Plus and that silicone craft sheet are going to be. All right, so let's come back to here. I'm gonna turn it horizontally because you remember I said I can't do too many things straight. Crease towards the center. I am gonna try my best not to get my head inside your camera view and I am lining up the raw edges of that hinge to that base cardstock, and we're gonna press that in place. Do you see this? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on this one. So let me slide that over. We're going to add adhesive now to the back side of this. And we're going to add it all around the four sides. You need a nice, strong adhesive here. If you prefer tear and tape adhesive, that works as well. All right, so now that we've got this here, we are going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to turn this sideways to make it easy for my hand. The crease is here, so that's going to go to the inside. 
And then I'm going to line up this center crease mark to that outside edge. Now, if everything's cut right, this should work perfectly. Yeah, said the person who has a few people watching her, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got this. This is where the other panel comes into play. This is gonna create what I call the sandwich. Now, I prefer to add the adhesive here versus here, because obviously this is gonna flap and this has got a seam. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna flip that over. And here comes my adhesive around the outside. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. Don't chintz on the adhesive. You know, I got a little chintzy on my original one. And then I thought, nope, you know what? Don't be chintzy. Because sometimes we're always in a hurry to craft, aren't we? And we just wanna get it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this over the top, mirroring this at the very best that I can. None of us are perfect. We're always off by a smidgen sometimes. There we go, we've got that in place. So let me show you here. If I were to open this up, you're gonna look and see that it looks like this. So we had that back piece and we have a front piece. We have the two hinges sandwiched between there. It's really easy, isn't it? This is really all there is to it. The silicone craft sheet and the other products that I'm using tonight can all be found in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. And I love cohesiveness. So I'm gonna add some designer series paper that matches those panels to the front of this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that here. And once again, I'm not gonna be chintzy. So I'm gonna kind of go around here and just add it around those outside edges. Let me get that going. And then that is gonna go on top of here. And I'm just looking to leave that nice border all the way around. The nice thing about these designer series papers that have darker impressions on them, they're really stunning on a white layer, aren't they? Really pretty. All right, next thing, we gotta decorate it and then I'm gonna show you how all this comes together. So let's push this off to the side. I've got some scrap cardstock here and I've got some pieces. So let me pull these little pieces out for you. This happens to be thick whisper white cardstock. Now I saw in the comments before we started that some of you were very concerned about Stampin' Up's white cardstock inventory. Um, as you know, it's public knowledge, the company that provided our white cardstock actually went out of business during COVID. It is horrible. All those people with their jobs, it's just heartbreaking. But the good news is there is brand new white paper coming your way that is very comparable that I think you're gonna love. And I expect it very, very soon. So don't lose heart, hang tight. It should be here very soon. I'm gonna be using a brand new mini catalog stamp set called Simply Succulents. Now, while I tried not to kill everything green in my house, the things that are outside here in Florida do very well. Indoor plants don't survive, so I can kind of fake it with the stamp set. If you don't like to color, stamp these on colored cardstocks and then use the coordinating dies. But you're gonna find these in the brand new mini catalog, which debuts tomorrow. We've been waiting and waiting. Tomorrow is the big day. In addition to tomorrow comes Stampin' Up's large celebration sale. For every $50 in product that you purchase from either this catalog or this catalog of your choice, you're gonna get something for free from this brochure. Yeah, I said free. It's kind of almost hard to believe, isn't it? Too good to be true. This sale starts January 5th. It will go through February 28th. And if you would like copies of those catalogs, you can request them over at lisastampstudio.com under catalogs. Now I'm gonna be using my Memento Black ink pad here because we're gonna do a little coloring and I'm not gonna bore you with all the coloring. I've got some already done, but I wanna give you some really cool tips to color these succulents. So I've pulled out some images. I've of course got one of my larger succulents here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna ink that up and I'm gonna stamp one here and I'm gonna stamp another here. The great thing about the stamp set is you can piecemeal your image, your bouquet, your pot together, however you'd like, and wait until you see the dies. If you think the stamps are cool, wait until you see those. All right, so there's a different one. And then last but not least, I've got my pot here. So let me stamp that here. I love how that center has been cut out. So for those of us that get a little zealous with inking it up, you know how you get that smidge right there? Not going to happen. Absolutely love that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put that off to the side. I'm gonna push these two pieces off to the side and we're gonna focus on this. I just wanna zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what I'm going to do. I am not gonna bore you with the whole thing, like I said, but I wanna give you some coloring tips. Now, typically succulents are always green, but you know, I did some homework and you're gonna see this in upcoming videos. There are actually blue and yellow succulents too. Actually, there's colors that all along the rainbow in succulents. So use your imagination. Don't think the card has to be entirely green. 
But for the sake of today, I'm going to be using my old olive Stampin' Blends markers. Now, these come in a combination. We're going to get the light and the dark. They are dual-ended. You see the line here underneath the cap? That designates the size of the tip. So you can choose what works well for you. The smaller the area, obviously, the smaller tip that you're going to want to use. So I'm going to start with that one here. And I'm just going to do just a, oh, look at I did. I just used the dark one. Okay, see, I'm yakking and not paying attention. Good thing I got two images. Let's go ahead and just do a couple petals so that you get the idea. And I'm working in small circular motions. The one thing about these markers is guess what? They're not dye based. These are alcohol based stamp and blends markers, which means you're gonna need to give it a couple seconds for that alcohol to evaporate in order for this to become more of its true tone. Just like with anything else that's alcohol, it has a tendency to spread as the color is laid. So just give it a couple seconds before you add the next shade of color. Now, I'm not a great colorer by any sense of the word. I did do a lot of practicing. I do love to be artsy, but I kind of fake it. And if you're trying to fake it like me, I'm gonna just give you the tips that I use that seem to work pretty well. I'm gonna take that dark shade and I'm gonna place it here near the center where those petals meet. Because if the sun was looking at it, I'm thinking those are the areas that would be the darkest and the outside areas where the petals are exposed would be the lightest. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark. Remember, the darker the color that you're using, the more concentrated it's going to be. So if you add too much, it's going to be difficult for you to blend, and it's going to be overpowering to your image. And of course, I didn't do a whole lot there, but you get the idea. Once again, that alcohol has to dissipate. Now, I'm going to add a, light, a little bit more extra color here to the outside tips, because most succulents, if you with them, have a variegated color on the outside. This is the light rich razzle berry. Now there is a dark shade to this. And even though you get them in the combination, I love that you can use them independently. And did you know you can mix colors together to get custom combinations? So I'm gonna add very little right here to those tips. Just add a little that little bit of purple razzle berry kind of coloring tone, just to make them look a little bit more realistic. The one thing I love about alcohol-based markers is they are very, very forgiving because if you have too much color, guess what you can do? You can go back over them and color and blend over and over again. And if you're not aware of this, I have an entire series on using the Stampin' Blends of markers right here on my YouTube channel. I am going back to the light now. And what I'm looking to do is take these harsh lines and blend them to get rid of that harsh tone between those two shades. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to swirl some of that dark into that light. So I'm going to do the same thing here, same thing here. And I think you get the idea. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I don't recommend covering it all because as that alcohol, you can see it, it's starting to evaporate. The color tone is changing. And if you've added too much rich razzleberry, let me give you another tip. Take your light color and go over it. As it processes it, it's going to make it a little bit more muted make it a little bit more realistic. All right, so I did that for those two. And then my pot, which left me with this, because you know what? There are amazing dyes to this stamp. Now let me show you too a little trick. Here is the dye for this succulent. Do you see my little red dot? Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know probably all about this little secret, but I gotta share it with you again for those of you that are new. I literally was doing this, trying to line the thing up. And I'm like, okay, that's, we're going to do that one time and we're never going to do it again. So let me show you what I did. Here's the stamp. Once I stamped it on my cardstock, I took a little black Sharpie marker. I've got one here. And I made a little tiny dot right on the back of the image. Now you want a blunt tip. You don't want something sharp that's going to damage it. Give it a couple seconds for that ink to dry. And then I mounted it so I could use it. Once I determined where that was, I was sure to make sure I stamped this where the dot was at the top. And then I took a little tiny bit of nail polish and I mimicked the position of that dot with the die so that I could easily put that through my die cutting machine every single time and not worry about how it lines up. It sure made my life easier. Took just under a minute to do all this and now I don't ever have to fuss with it again. So just a tip for you there. Let me set these off to the side. Remember we were talking about those dies? Well, guess what? There are pieces in this die set that are not part of the stamp set, which is what makes it amazing. 
here they are. These are the potted succulent dyes. And of course, I've pulled out the ones that we've die cut here, but there are also dyes that die cut other pieces of the succulents. So I'm gonna call this aloe vera for the sake of not knowing what it is. And I'm gonna call this like, looks like, like a pea plant, like little peas, doesn't it? I know there's a fancy name, maybe it's a beaded succulent, I don't know. But I die cut a couple of those before you joined me. And that left me with this and with this. And I love, like I said, that there's other pieces, part of the dies that are not part of the stamp set. So talk about really expounding your purchase. But guess what? I'm gonna flip this over, are you ready? Look at this. Now you might think, oh, that's cool, but it's even cooler when you see it die cut. And I have one here for you. Isn't this stunning? So with the stamp and cut emboss machine, this die cut this lickety split. I had no poking. You can go ahead and you can add the adhesive sheets. You don't have to add glue dots or liquid glue. Add that right to a card base, a really stunning greeting. Add this on rainbow glimmer paper, shiny acetates or foil. And I mean, you've got an instant card. Just gorgeous, isn't it? So that's all part of the dies. One of the things you need to know too is if you buy in a bundle, which means you're going to get the dies and the stamp set together, you save 10%. I don't know about you, I'm all about saving money. What I like to do is I like to build my pot first before I go ahead and start attaching it to my card. Couple reasons. Sometimes I've built this too tall and it doesn't fit the panel that I've created, which is gonna be really important today. Sometimes I've made it too short. So this is gonna allow me to move pieces around. I like to use my glue dots because it makes it super easy for me. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reveal one of those glue dots here. I've got my take your pick tool. It's got a putty tip here going to help me pick up those pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of these here to the front back because I'm going to put this one behind here. Now, I also know that plants grow outside of the images of the pot. You know, they get kind of wild and happy. So if it's hanging out, it's okay. So we've got that first one here. Then I'm going to take this large piece here. Remember, I thought this was kind of like aloe vera. I'm going to add a glue dot to the front bottom and then I'm going to build this one. Now, this is where we're going to need to be careful. Bring in your panel and just look and make sure you're not going to make it too tall because this is a moving front, which I'm going to share with you. You want to make sure that it's not going to impede and get in the way of grabbing onto this panel. So I'm looking and I'm like, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and let's stick that there. And then I'm going to move over now to this other piece and let's add a glue dot here. This time I'm going to add it to the back because I'm going to put this on the front of my pot. And you know, oftentimes when I'm building these, sometimes I need more glue. And I know you're probably thinking that's not enough to hold in place. Well, it is and it isn't. So I'm going to give you some tips about doing what I call a little card surgery here when we're done. Then we've got these things. I wish I knew the name of this. I'm sure one of you is gonna help me. I kind of want this here because my last one is going to go here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna add it to the back of this succulent because if I have an excess amount that sticks out, I can give these little guys a haircut and then kind of get them where I want them. Yep, I think they're gonna show. So now I'm gonna come here from the back side. I'll use my paper snips and just cut those off along with some of those little pieces, which is fine because I just cut off the connection of where they were. And now I'm gonna add another glue dot here to hold this in place. By adding the glue dot to your project and not to the smaller piece, you don't risk ripping it. That's just another really good tip for you. And then let's go ahead and add this right down here at the bottom. That looks pretty good. I want it to look realistic and let's just make sure everything's gonna fit and it does. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this with dimensionals. So now that it's all assembled, Remember I talked to you about whether or not this was going to be enough to hold it in place. So this is what I call card surgery. Glue dots is so much easier for me. I'm gonna take my take your pick tool. This time I'm using the other end with the paper piercing tool attachment. And I'm gonna come up behind here, very carefully lifting, not breaking that cardstock fiber. And I'm tacking that in place because I know that this is going to move on that panel. I wanna make sure these front pieces are secure and everything on here is really good now. All right, so let's flip this over and I'm going to grab my dimensionals, which are here. I love these double-sided pieces of foam tape. They are pre-cut, which means I don't have to gunk up my scissors. I am very careful to make sure they are well-balanced on the back of my images 
because I'm going to be mailing this. And the mail meter at the post office has rollers in it. And the vast majority of what you mail goes through that machine. It's our responsibility as the person who puts it in the mail to make sure you've got it balanced because you want your project to come out looking like you created it. So let's just make sure this is going the right way with our hinges on the sides. And then let's go ahead and adhere that here. Now, finally, what I decided to do was add a small greeting. And I didn't dare do this while you're watching me because I'm old. <laughs> I need my head closer to the TV or closer to the, uh, to the screen. So I stamped the greeting, you've been on my mind, on a small piece of white cardstock. I actually cut it small and stamp. You can stamp it and then cut around it. Either way works. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to put this here across the card. But I know that this side has an elevation difference. So I want to give you a little bit of a tip. I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet once again. On this side where it says you've been, we're going to add a little bit of adhesive. So I've got my stamp and seal plus here. I'm going to add a little adhesive. On this side, we are going to add a mini dimensional to compensate for the elevation that's here. And here are my mini dimensionals. I'm going to use that tool. You can tell I love this thing. And I'm going to take off that backing. Now what's going to happen when I put this together, these are going to fall correctly. Now where you place this is entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong way. I'm going to kind of overlap those little plant leaves there and then just stick that here. Okay, so here we go. Are you ready to put this together? And then I did choose to embellish mine, which I also want to walk you through. Let's do that quickly before we end up putting the embellishments on. I love sparkle and sometimes a card with a real simple background to me screams just a little bit more. The loose sequin assortment is called Whale of a Time and I loved the colors. And one of the reasons I love loose sequins is not only to make shaker cards, of course, was because I can pick out the colors that I want for various different projects. Do you see them in there? Now you're also probably wondering, glue, more glue. Well, I'm not a glue girl because I'm way too messy with it. So I'm gonna show you what I use. These are little micro mini glue dots and these are part of every month's paper pumpkin kit. Yes, I'm a paper pumpkin subscriber. And you're probably thinking, well, what does that have to do with this? Well, paper pumpkin is a monthly craft subscription. And what it allows you to do is to literally open up the box every single month and enjoy a fun crafting project without any prep. The beauty is, is not only do you get these glue dots, which are fantastic, it is self-contained, which means you don't need to have anything. It's for the brand new stamper, clear to the person who's seasoned, who just wants a break from designing. So I'm just gonna kind of mimic this for right here. And I'm gonna decide where that other little um, embellishment's gonna go. Let's take one more. You know what, let's put this one way over here just for fun. Now they have paper backings on them. Now paper pumpkin includes a stamp set every single month. It also includes a ink spot, which is a different color every single month. It is self-contained. Like I said, it comes right to your door and you're ready for the best part. $22 a month out the door right to you. You gotta love that. You open it up and you create. Every month's kit is a little bit of a surprise, which I love because there's no surprises left in the world today, are there? So it's kind of fun to open it up and they give you so much as far as adhesive and extra little pieces that you can do other fun things with them. So I took off those paper backings. I've edited those sequins. I know that they're good and stuck and let's go ahead and put the slide and lock together. So we're gonna open this up very carefully. You don't wanna bend it. So we've got our mechanism here, you see? We are gonna slide one of these down inside and the other one down inside. Look, I'm gonna show you from the top and this slides down the front. Is this not cool? But you know what the great part is? It does lock. So you don't have to worry about it falling off. Oh, like that, unless you give it a really good shake. So let's go ahead and put this right back on top of here. Again, open up the hinges with your fingers. You're gonna slide this in and then you're gonna lock this on, all right? So that's how this stays. If you do not give it that little sliver here, this will not come off. You want them to be able to get the card off. Now on this card specifically, because of the greeting that I have, you've been on my mind. I decided to leave the inside blank on this because I wanna be able to write my own message. But I have one more for you. And this one says, just wanted to say, is this not amazing? This uses the ornate thanks stamp set. I used that daisy punch and I just doubled it up to get a fuller bloom. 
I used that beautiful ornate garden designer series paper, played up those foils in that paper with some gold foil. Are you ready? Here's the slide on this one. This comes up and this says, just wanted to say, and this one says, thank you. So I just use the coordinating inks here to the daisies to make my two cards. Do you notice too, these are different sizes. Remember I told you that you can actually create these to be the size that you want. And it's the exact same thing as I've done here, four pieces, make sure they're all the same color, make sure you can score two of the four pieces in half to make the slide mechanism. And to put it back on, you're just gonna slide like this. Trust me when I tell you, they're gonna be able to easily figure this out because I gave this to my husband who we finally called Bob the Builder and he got it with no trouble. Isn't this stunning? Which of these two is your favorite? I would love to know. I'm kind of favoring this one because of the colors and it's brand new product, but this is so cheerful. Let me turn the camera around and let me share some upcoming details with you, especially about an upcoming retreat online and the next live. Oh, I'm starting to see your comments and I'm so glad that you've enjoyed it. It looks tricky, but it's not, it's really simple. And I love that you've got all kinds of possibilities for this. Wouldn't this be fun as an invitation or an announcement? Oh, I think it would be fantastic. Quite frankly, it'll work for any occasion whatsoever. I am looking for my piece of paper where I think that I've buried here, but I wanna to talk to you really quick about a couple of things. First, the lssretreat.com website is where we are featuring the Creative 8 Team's Winter Retreat. It is going to be held in just a few weeks on January 16th, which is a Saturday. You are not going to want to miss it. We are five top Stampin' Up! demonstrators in the United States, and we are coming to you live for a full one-day stamping event. We take turns presenting demonstrations to you. And if you're wondering how it's any different than what we have on YouTube, oh, trust me, it is. It's way more personal. It is interactive and fun. And I will tell you, in addition to that, you're going to get tutorials and video links for everything. So you can save it all and refer back to it. All the information for that full day event is over at lssretreat.com. LSS stands for Lisa's Stamp Studio. You can read all about it there, see the pictures of the demonstrators involved, who I'm sure you know, as well as register with me. I would love to have you as my special guest. Registration deadline is coming up and I don't want you to miss it. So make sure you head over there and get that information. Many of you have joined me before on our retreat, and you know what a fantastic day it is. And did I happen to mention Prize Patrol? Yeah, we give away a lot of product prizes during the event, and you're not going to want to miss the Friday night before it, which is January 15th, where all five of us are together and do a very interactive and fun and funny get to know the Creative 8 team. It's a fantastic time. Read all about it, and I would love to have you join us. The event is $45, and that includes Friday nights, get to know us, and all day, we're talking like 10 hours of stamping presentations, tutorials, and videos for you, all from the comfort of your home. Stay in your PJs or your sweats all day, order some food in, and stamp along with us. We'd love to have you join us. Finally, head over to lisastampstudio.com, sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. That's the best way for you to stay connected with me to know what's happening, when, and how not to miss it. And also in that newsletter, I provide you with a free PDF tutorial that I do not share on my any other platforms. It's exclusive to that newsletter. Then make sure you mark your calendar because I'm coming back to you live next week with another fun fold, which I have to say, I think is topping and one of my favorites because the color combination is one of my favorites of all time. If you like cheerful and you like different, you're going to love this. I'm going to be back live with you on Wednesday, January 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, if you click the subscribe button down below and you click the little bell icon and the word all, you're going to get reminders from YouTube so that you don't miss it. Come join the interactive fun that's here and be with me and I'd love to teach you another card. Thank you so much for being with me tonight. Megan, thanks for all your hard work and answering everyone's questions. And I look forward to seeing you then. Once again, Happy New Year, everyone.